You have an emotional immune system just like your physical one, but I doubt any doctor has ever told you about it. That's because most people never see what I see when patients are going unconscious here in surgery, when your mind enters the ultimate survival mode. And I want to show you your brain's secret defense system so that you finally understand why your body does what it does when it's fighting to survive. Here's what's eerie. Your immune system and your nervous system are almost identical. For example, they both store memories. One creates and stores antibodies against threats like viruses, the other stores experiences. And in surgery, both systems are hyperactivated. On one hand, your immune system is battling potential surgical infections while orchestrating every aspect of healing, forming scars, closing wounds, and rebuilding tissue. Your nervous system is simultaneously fighting the trauma of the surgery itself. Without anesthesia keeping your nervous system suppressed, it would be kicking and screaming and biting. It's pure survival mode. And I've seen what happens when the anesthesia gets a little too light and patients do fight back, even though they're totally unconscious and don't remember it. And here's where it gets intense, because both the nervous system and the immune system become very tight and rigid under threat. Your immune system forms thick, discolored tissue that never feels quite right. I'm sure you've felt this on scars throughout your body, but your nervous system? It does something almost primitive when it's under anesthesia. When your body is most vulnerable, in a medical coma where you're completely defenseless in surgery, your nervous system activates ancient protective reflexes called decerebrate and decorticate posturing. Your body unconsciously contorts into defensive positions with rigid, tight muscles like a protective armor. It's so powerful that sometimes multiple surgical staff need to hold down your arms so that you don't flex them and hurt yourself or others, and sometimes you'll even need restraints to keep your arms by your side from hurting you. Self-injury by unconscious patients is a very real concern, especially when patients are coming out of the depths of that medical coma, what we call general anesthesia. It's also why we need to use paralyzing medications to deactivate the nerves that cause those muscles to be so tight that it can interfere with the surgery itself. But this rigid nervous system armor isn't always physical. I've watched hundreds of patients get stuck in loops of thought like a mental prison before, during, and after surgery. Some are terrified of pain and can't stop ruminating about it. Others become obsessed with the thought of never waking up, even though the odds are infinitesimal. Their minds lose all flexibility, and that survival mode means that their brain might fixate on any possible threat, and they lose the critical tolerance of ambiguity. It's identical to an immune system that has gone rogue laying down massive keloid scars. Those thick, raised, fleshy-looking scars that grow far beyond the initial trauma site itself. The physical protection system overactivates and causes more harm than the original threat itself. If you've ever had a thick scar before, you know the feeling. Numb, inflexible, or just wrong sometimes. The thicker the scar, the more the sensation of that tissue dies away. Some patients tell me years after their surgery that the skin over the surgical site still feels foreign and sometimes even has a strange tingling sensation that never quite goes away. Your emotional defense system can create the exact same thing. In some patients, it's the numbness of depression where nothing or no one can reach you. It can be PTSD's loss of joy in things that once excited you. Or it can be anxiety's indifference to the future where nothing feels worth looking forward to. It's protective scar tissue, but wrapped around your brain. And just like physical scars, you lose feeling in exchange for protection. Can you feel where your emotional scars have formed? If you feel comfortable, share your experience in the comments below so others can learn as well. And if you want to learn about how to work with your subconscious mind instead of against it, visit my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com. Understanding your mind's secret defense system is just the first step in harnessing your innate healing potential to live healthier and longer. Back to your body's subconscious defense mechanisms, here's what gets fascinating. We doctors have gotten very good at fine-tuning your immune system. 
we can sometimes prevent it from going rogue and attacking your own body, like in the form of rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, or forming those hypertrophic keloid scars. But it's a razor's edge. If you suppress it too much, you open your body up to dangerous or opportunistic infections or non-healing wounds like ulcers in patients with diabetes. Fortunately, we've developed medications that are pretty good at threading the needle here for the immune system. And your nervous system needs identical precision. Overactivate it and you might be imprisoned by defensive thought loops, panic attacks, or living in constant survival mode. Underactivated, you might experience what so many of my patients tell me about feeling numbed out or disconnected from life. All equally devastating. Just like your immune system, your nervous system needs that balance to be healthy and whole. Now for the intense part, because your nervous system and immune system are actually in constant communication on top of all this. When your fight flight system or your sympathetic nervous system is overactivated, it activates your immune system. And when your immune system overactivates, it triggers your sympathetic nervous system. It's a feedback loop that can spiral out of control. I see this clearly in surgery, where patients' psychological stress levels can impact their wound healing after surgery. It's not that stress is bad, but rather that too little or too much impairs your immune system from functioning properly and might inhibit your ability to fight infections and heal wounds. This may predispose to surgical site infections or delayed wound healing that can all worsen chronic pain. This means that even when patients are completely asleep and unconscious in surgery, their stored stress, like what their body has kept score of, influences how they'll wake up and recover. You've probably experienced this yourself. When you're really stressed out, your overworked brain can shut down your immune system. That's why you get cold sores or aphthous ulcers when life gets overwhelming. You're more vulnerable to viral infections, including coughs and colds. And when you do get sick, your immune system cranks up your nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system specifically, increasing your heart rate and your metabolic rate. Long COVID taught us an extreme example of this connection. You see, there's this bundle of nerves in your neck called the stellate ganglion, and it governs your body's fight flight response. In many long COVID patients, the stellate ganglion is overactivated, like it's permanently stuck in an emergency mode. It turns out that you can numb these nerves with a local anesthetic like lidocaine to effectively quiet the sympathetic nervous system. And doing this nervous system rebalancing can relieve the loss of sense of taste and smell, the extreme fatigue or the brain fog that accompanies many folks with long COVID. It does not work with everyone with long COVID, but the data is quite impressive and I use this regularly with my patients in my clinic. And this demonstrates how rebalancing the nervous system, meaning the fight-flight response, and the rest and digest response can also rebalance the immune system. And here's where it gets even more fascinating, because blocking the same nerves, the stellate ganglion, can also relieve tremendous pain in patients struggling with PTSD. The emotional trauma is literally stored in the same nerve cluster that mediates our immune system. You're typically not consciously controlling your nervous system or immune system, but your subconscious defense systems, both physically and emotionally, do speak the same language. And this explains the profound mind-body connection I witness in patients having surgery or in the altered state of consciousness when they're receiving IV ketamine therapy with me, where I help guide these patients through the altered state of consciousness to find healing from depression, PTSD, or physical chronic pain. And it's no surprise that ketamine also has anti-inflammatory effects, which may explain some of its profound psychiatric benefits. And this is why your emotional and immune system's health are inseparable from your longevity. You can't expect good long-term physical health without good mental health and vice versa. This is what I hope you can advocate for in yourself and your loved ones. If this opened your eyes to something new, please share with the folks that you care about. And visit my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com to learn more about your innate healing capacity for optimal health and longevity. And remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.